One of the things I have in my spirit to accomplish in my time here, like I said, a short time, Wednesday, because I know, I mean, I was talking about it on Friday night, having a Kingdom Business Fellowship meeting, which we haven't done in a while here because of this whole shutdowns and lockdowns and all that kind of stuff. But um, we really taken it, you know, because we have a strategy, okay? We're not doing things, you know, the old-fashioned way. I mean, we have a strategy for what we're doing. I mean, there's multiple fronts on this strategy. The battle is raging, and we have multiple battlefields that were raging war, and one of the areas is in the realm of business and finance and prosperity, especially we've got to see our people go to the next level in the area of business, Amen. okay? So I really felt to do the Kingdom Business Fellowship. Then I thought, you know, I've got such a short time. I've, I've got, you know, my apartment here that I'm trying to empty out. I've got legal issues that we got to resolve with the new foundation, some other stuff. So what I'm going to, you know, felt to do is Wednesday night we do fellowship night okay so we'll have the food and the fellowship and i get to hang out with people you know actually see people and talk to them because you know when you're preaching you don't necessarily interact with people individually so at least that gives them some time to interact with people and then we're going to turn wednesday night into a kingdom business fellowship meeting where i'm going to talk about kingdom business and i'm going to release an anointing in this place Amen. for the power to create wealth and to prosper and go to the next level because we need to have every Christian own their own business and, stop, and not work for Pharaoh anymore. Amen. And we've got to get you guys out of a job mentality. You know what job ah. means, right? J-O-B, just over broke. Yes, okay? Sir. So we've got to get you guys out of a job mentality into an entrepreneurship. I really, I, I, I've been seeing the, an anointing and the spirit of entrepreneurship being released now Amen. powerfully in West Palm Beach, also many of our people, because, you know, there a lot of them are now being forced. If you don't take the vaccination, then you, you don't have a job. Well, take your job and shove it, okay? <laughs> Fire your boss, because your boss will be working for you in a year's time. You need to go into business. You know, that's, that's the, the, you know, we need to become entrepreneurs. If we have this anointing, access to the anointing to create wealth, then we need to do something with it. There's a special anointing, and there is a special, you know, one of the things we've talked about is there are end-time anointings that are released for such a time as this, because we've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. You know, this, this is not 1950s. This is not 1980s. This is not the 1800s. This is, these are the last days. We have very little time left. I don't know, maybe 10 years. I'm not going to give you a date, but we got to act like we only have about a decade left, maybe even less. The rapture of the church is imminent. It's about to happen very soon. But then there is a job to be done. The church has to do a job. It, the church is not to just go hide in a cave, eating lima beans from a can, and waiting for Jesus to come. We need to occupy till he comes. That's what Jesus said. And occupy means to conduct business, to be about our father's business. Amen. And that, whether that's full-time ministry, you do that. But I believe there's going to be people that are going to be used in ministry and the marketplace at the same time. Because these things are merging together. And, and, and we don't have much time. So there's going to be an acceleration. I've been preaching on that supernatural acceleration. What does that mean? That means things that used to take 10 years are going to be accomplished in a year's time. God's going to supernaturally accelerate the work for the church. But he's looking for men and women that know how to yield to the anointing. Because the only way that this happens is by the anointing. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So it's not going to be by your education. It's not going to be by your, even though those are nice, it's not going to be by your connections. It's not going to be by the hand of the flesh, arm of the flesh. But it's going to be by the anointing. So we need to learn how to yield to the anointing. So that God can raise people up in these last days to fund the end time harvest. Because, God, because there's an end time wealth transfer that's coming into the kingdom. The end time harvest is twofold. Not only is there a harvest of souls, but there's also a harvest of money Amen. and resources that's coming to the church to get the job done. Because the gospel has two legs. Just like we all have two legs. And you need two legs to stand on. You know how many of you realize it's kind of hard to stand on one leg for too long? Especially walking. And running forget about it you need two legs and the gospel has two legs yeah. one is the natural the other one is the supernatural one is the money and the resources and the finances and the other one is the anointing the power of the holy ghost Amen. we need to have both Amen. and there's going to be an acceleration there's going to be a release of the two you know i mean uh, i know we don't have it here but how many of you are familiar with our logo the river logo there's two streams 
Okay, why are there two streams on our logo? I don't know if you can throw that up there, but, you know, why are there two streams in our logo? It's the two streams that we've been preaching on for, for a very, very long time. Okay, and then whole two streams comes from, there we go, the two streams comes from, how many of you remember, know the story? Okay, you don't know the story. So you, who knows the story? Okay, like three people. Okay, who does not know the story? All right, who, who wants to hear the story? All right, okay. All right. How many of you heard of the great, late, great Reinhard Bonka, the great evangelist that shook Africa? Okay, well, he's gone home to be with the Lord now. But back in his early days of ministry, he was in Lesotho, Lesotho, I believe, and he was believing God for $100 for his ministry. He was believing God for $100. And he, was, he went on a fast to pray for $100. And then he was walking on the dirt roads of Africa, and he saw a $100 bill. And the Lord said, pick it up. And then, you know, and then the Lord provided for him. But then he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, is it always going to be like this? I mean, come on, a hundred bucks. I mean, I have to go on a three-day fast to get a hundred bucks. I mean, I'm, I'm here to shake a continent. I need not a hundred dollars. I need a hundred million dollars. You know, I need, I, need, I need resources. Is it always going to be like this? And the Lord spoke to him. He said, no. And he said, in the last days, the upper and the lower springs will come together. Now, the upper and the lower springs... Let's go to the book of Judges because I want to show you the story. And this, see, you have to understand, you're not, just, you don't, you're not just coming to a service in some church here. You need to understand you're connecting with a kingdom vision. Yes. You're connecting with a kingdom strategy. There's a, there's a way that we do things here at the river. There's a reason for the things that we do. There's a, there's a, there's a um, method to the madness. <laughs> There's a strategy involved here. So go with me to the book of Judges. And as a matter of fact, the last, pretty much the last, well, not the last message, but one of the last messages I preached in, here in Istanbul, which was, if you remember, uh, the graduation ceremony, December um, 2019. I can't remember which December, uh, December which day it was, 6th, I believe. That was actually the day Reinhard Banka went home to be with the Lord. And we were about to have our graduation ceremony for the river bible institute that was the previous one because we skipped a year we couldn't have it so that was the last one in 2019 our eurasian camp meeting remember and we we're about to I was, we're getting ready for the graduation ceremony the the service there uh, at the at the camp meeting you know and and it was saturday and i was putting on my robe you know and then i got it I started to get bombarded with messages. Reinhard Bonka has gone home to be with the Lord. And immediately, the Lord spoke to me. He says, everything's about to change. The end time ministry for the church is now being released. And then if you remember the message, I said, get ready for 2020. is going to be a year of great, big changes. My Lord, I didn't even realize what I was saying. That in, a three, in my two, three months time, the pandemic was going to hit. And the Antichrist was going to ramp up its work yeah. to enslave the nations, to bring them under the one world government control. Come on, somebody. Yeah, and then what was, the, the, what was the, the verse that the Lord gave us for 2020? With an unveiled face, yeah. beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are being transformed from glory unto glory into the image of the Lord. Yeah. I mean, come on, unveiled face, unmasked. You can't mask the anointing. You can't veil the anointing. The veil and the mask is removed in Christ. I mean, faith over fear. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And then I begin to speak about the two streams. So let's go now to the book of Judges, chapter 1. Okay, now remember, <clears throat> remember now, it was only Joshua and Caleb that were able to enter the promised land of all the millions of Israelites from that previous first generation full of doubt and unbelief that listened to the 10 spies, their evil report, right? They en ended up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years and they perished. Now a, a young generation has come up that's going to go into the promised land. But from the previous generation, it's only Caleb and Joshua. So Caleb is here, verse 13 Okay, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it. So he gave him his daughter, Aksa, as wife. Now it happened when she came to him that she urged him to ask her father for a field. 
and she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, what do you wish? Verse 15, so she said to him, give me a blessing. Since you have given me land in the south, give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. The upper springs and the lower springs. All right. So now, then my pastor, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, he was in Africa, in Nigeria. I believe it was 2004 or 5 with Reinhard Bonnke in one of his big crusades where he had like a couple of million people there in Nigeria. And he was there, and then they were talking, and Bonka talked to the Lord, uh, uh, talked to my pastor about how, you know, the Lord had sp- spoken to him in very, very early days of his ministry. So that would be, I don't know, 60s maybe, 1970s, about how in the last days, the upper and the lower springs would come together. And then, and then at the very moment he said that, my pastor said, and there shall be a flood. Because he had been preach- preaching, there's a flood coming. Okay? There's a flood coming. And so, and he asked him, said, have you ever preached this message? He says, no, I've never preached it. And then, you know, Dr. Rodney said, well, can I preach it? I, I feel that this is a prophetic word for the church, that there's a flood coming. The purpose of the upper and the lower springs is that there shall be a flood. All right, so now the upper springs represents what you see on the surface. That's the money. The lower springs represents what you don't see. Underneath, beneath, that's the anointing. So there's going to be the two that are going to come together to bring a flood for the church for the last days to accomplish the purpose. Because you have to understand the end times are not in the power of the devil. And the book of Revelation is not about the Antichrist. The book of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I had somebody come to me and say, Pastor, I'm afraid to read the book of Revelation. There are demons in there and creatures and beasts and antichrist. I'm scared. I said, you better read that book. It's not about the antichrist or the locusts or the beasts. And I said, it's about Jesus Christ that comes in his glory to crush the beast. Come on, it's, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. The spirit of prophecy is a, is a revelation of Jesus Christ. The whole book is about Jesus Christ. The Bible reveals Jesus Christ. The Antichrist is just a figurehead. He's the bad guy that gets killed in the movie. Come on. He's the bad guy that gets taken out. He's the criminal bad guy. Amen. Hallelujah. So, (laughs) the end times are in the power of, are in the hands of the Lord. He determines the times and the seasons. And, and they're already set. Yes. Yeah. The times and the seasons are set. In the due course of time, Jesus was born. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, Amen. the Holy Ghost came. And then the time will come and the Father will say to the Son, Son, go bring, my, you know, bring your bride up here. Because Jesus said, you know, I go to my Father. I go to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. And, and then I will come and receive you unto myself so that where I am, you will be also. And he's coming back for his church, a glorious church without spot or blemish. He's coming back for the bride. He's not coming back for the harlot. Not the, not the harlot church that sleeps with the world. But he's coming back for a glorious church without spot or blemish. That has kept herself pure. That has kept herself undefiled. That has not compromised the word. That has not been in bed with the world. Amen. Come on somebody. Ah, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. We're about to have something break out in this place right now. So she urged him, give me. It's it's not enough to have the land. I need the upper springs and I need the lower springs. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Caleb is a type of the church that takes a hold of the promise. Not the type of the church that is full of doubt and unbelief and fear and listens to the evil report that perishes in the wilderness in poverty and lack and defeat. Caleb is the type of the church that rises up above the circumstances even in the midst of being a, just, there were only two. In the midst of two million people, there was only two that believed God. And the Lord said, you know what? You will enter the promised land. Caleb is a type of the church. I know, I know we talk often about Joshua, but what about Caleb? Caleb was actually kind of a businessman. He was a minister, but he was also a businessman. Joshua was the leader, 
spiritual and military, but Caleb led the economy. He gave her the upper and the lower spring. So Caleb is a type of the church that rises up in faith and enters in to the promises of God and takes a hold of the promises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because why? Because there are what? Heaps coming. Heaps. Heaps. There you go. Heaps and heaps of blessing. So that's, that's what that is. It's the upper and the lower springs coming together. And there shall be a flood. And the flood is here. We're experiencing the blessing of God. She said, give me a blessing since you have given me the land in the south. Give me also springs of water. So you have to understand the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. And he has no sorrow with it. But what is the blessing of the Lord? It comes by the anointing. Yes, sir. And it is the empowerment to create wealth. Mm -hmm. So that he may establish his covenant. Uh -huh. With which he swore to our forefathers. That means he, he swore by his own name. He made a covenant. He gave us a promise. That he is going to bless us. That he is going to give us the anointing. The power. The ability. The supernatural ability to create wealth. So there is an anointing for the end times. For the church to rise up. In the midst of the famine. Yes. And to see a hundredfold increase in blessing, just like Isaac sowed seed in the land, in the land of famine. And in the same year, the man prospered and received a hundredfold. And the Bible says the man prospered. He continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. That means he went beyond the hundredfold. So don't look at, don't look at the famine. Don't look at the pandemic. Don't look at the scamdemic. It's a scam. The whole thing's a scam. It's built on lies upon lies upon lies layers and layers and layers and layers of lies by and it's spoken out by the false prophets of the media and false prophets of the of the government and the false prophets that are everywhere that are speaking and creating a narrative for people to come into fear so that i've been telling you for what 15 years now those that are in fear will easily be manipulated and controlled that's why you cannot have a spirit of fear See, when you have a spirit of faith, you're under the control and dominion of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But when you have a spirit of fear, you come under the control and dominion of the spirit of Antichrist. That's why we have to be like Caleb, having a spirit of faith. Believing and speaking God's word. He believed it, he spoke it for 40 years, and he, now he's seen the fulfillment of it. He believed it when nobody else believed it. We believed it when everybody mocked us. I've been speaking on these things for over 10 years now concerning the end times and the last days. Give me a blessing. So Caleb gave her the upper and the lower springs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can they see me if they're on online? Zoom out so they can see the upper and the lower springs because I don't want them to, I'm pointing out into the air and that nobody's seeing. The upper and the lower springs. That's what... That's what's in our river logo. Hallelujah. So there is that river of financial blessing that's going to flow to God's people. Amen. And then there's a river of that supernatural blessing Amen. of the anointing that's going to flow into God's people. Amen. And out of your belly is going to flow these rivers of living water. And out of your belly is going to flow out strategies. Out of your belly is going to flow out breakthrough. Out of your belly is going to flow out all the, all the things that you need to accomplish what God's called you to do. And you shall not lack. You shall not lack. You shall not lack. You shall not lack. I said you shall not lack. If the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not lack. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm preaching better than you're responding right now. I said you shall not lack. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You will not lack. Yeah. Glory to God. You will not lack. No good thing shall be withheld from you. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that people are chasing after shall be added on to you because they're going to chase after you. You're not going to be chasing money. Money is going to be chasing you. Hey. You're not going to be chasing business. Business is going to be chasing you. You're not going to be chasing connections. Connections are going to be chasing you. Hallelujah. You're not going to be chasing clients and projects. 
clients and projects are going to be chasing you. Yeah. Glory to God. You need to trust the Lord, not get into fear and, and say, no, I don't know how we're going to make it. Oh, my God. What, what are we going to do now? Look at how the economy is. Look at what's going on in the world. Why are you looking at what's going on in the world? The Bible tells you not to walk by sight, yes. to walk by faith. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Hey! Yes. Hallelujah. I'm tired of talking to Christians who act like they have no hope, they have no remedy, they have no way, they have no answer. Take your eyes off of the circumstances. Put your eyes on Jesus. He is the beginning and the end. Amen. He who begun a good work in you shall, shall complete it. Yes. Hallelujah. All things work together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. You've been called according to God's purposes. And what you need to do is you need to connect with God's purpose for your life. That's where prosperity is. That's where the blessing is. That's where the increase and the multiplication is. Come on, somebody. Stop looking to the world. Give me a little... Maybe on the monitors or something, because I'm going to lose my voice. I got three services to do here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Is this helping anybody here today? So we need to press in for these things. We need to get a hold of the things of God and stop acting like we have no hope. Stop acting like we're defeated. Hallelujah. Hunkering down somewhere, hiding in some caves, going up and, and living in some mountains. And, and eating survival food. If you, list, if you listen to, the, the, to, to some of the American uh, tele-evangelists on Christian television, my Lord, they, they're selling you survival food. For your, for your gift of $250, we'll send you this pack of survival food. We're not here to survive. We're here to thrive. Come on. I'm not about survival. I'm about revival. Glory to God. I'm not a survivalist. I'm a revivalist. We're raising you up to be revivalists, not survivalists. Oh, my God, help me to get through another day and survive. That's not God's plan for you. God's plan for you is to take dominion and to subdue the pandemic. Rise above it. You're the head, not the tail. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're above only, not beneath. Yes. You're called to rule and reign in Christ. Yes. So be, you, well, I don't know. it's not been. Well, you know what? You haven't got a hold of God. Now, now is the time. It's a good thing. The shaking is good for the church. Yes. The church needs some adversity. The church needs some persecution. The church needs some, you know, some challenges. Your faith doesn't grow if, you're not, if it's not challenged. Your faith doesn't grow. Yeah, you know what happens when you just sit, eat, drink? You become a big, fat, <laughs> s- soft, flabby slob. You got to flex your faith muscles. You got to do some heavy lifting if you want your faith to grow. Yes, Hallelujah. I don't know what to do now. This has been challenging. Do some heavy lifting, man. Come on. Grow your faith muscles. Flex your faith muscles. Shakaramba dakaraba seteramanda. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey. I think I need to preach to this rear section a little bit. Maybe they didn't hear the translation. Make sure they get the translation. Man, there's like a 15 degree change from there to here. My Lord, I better go back up there. It's so warm on this side here. Maybe it's the fire of God. I don't know, but... Some of you all need to rise up, man. You need to get a hold of the Word of God. You've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. Come on. You were born at the right time. Like, oh my God. I wish, you know, I lived like maybe 20 years ago when things were... Because somebody said to me, there's never been a time like this in the world. Exactly. These are the last days Jesus talked about. But guess what? You've been called for the, into the kingdom for such a time as this. And God has a plan for you. God's going to use you. God's going to anoint you. God's called you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, say, thank you, Holy Ghost. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Shakama. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, I'm sweating. I better get back up here. 
get under these two streams of air conditioning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Maybe give him some more air back there or something. It's warm back there. Wake him up. I don't want people falling asleep because it's so warm. Jesus. Hallelujah. Chica. Fire. Yeah. You need to get the fire of the Holy Ghost on your tail. We're looking for 300 foxes. We're going to tie your tails together and we're going to set them on fire so you can run with the vision of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, ca- the foxes didn't run into some cave and go hide. They ran into the field. The Bible says they ran into the enemy's field. God anoints you so you can run into the enemy's field. What is the enemy's? The world is the enemy's field. The world is the enemy's field. You're going to run in there and you're going to blaze a trail with the fire of the Holy Ghost. And the fire is going to make a way for you. And the fire is going to protect you. And you're going to blaze the trail of revival. And you're going to blaze the trail for the harvest. You're going to blaze the trail for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So that's what those two streams are about. Now you know. Now everybody should know. Who knows now what's on our logo, why it's there? Okay, it's a prophetic message. It's a, it's a prophetic destiny of the, ch- the river church. It's the prophetic calling of the river church. Amen. We're not only, obviously, the foundation that we're built on is the word of God, but our destiny is our prophetic destiny. What is prof- prophetic destiny? Well, the things that are spoken into the future. We know who we are in Christ, but then we also need to know what God wants to do in our time, in our season, in our generation, in the nations through us. And that's our prophetic destiny. Hallelujah. So if you're looking for a prophetic word, you got one. Pastor, I need a prophetic word to run with. You got one now. Grab a hold of that and run with that. That's a corporate word. Hallelujah. Everybody's running around looking for prophecy. Running from, running from here to there, looking for some prophecy. Yeah. Prophecy is not information. It's confirmation. Yeah. And any, any prophecy God gives you individually is going to fit into the big picture anyways. And if it doesn't p- fit into the pic- big picture, it's not God. Yeah. Well, I got a prophetic word. I need to go uh, uh, get, buy survival food and, and go, live in, uh, go live up in the mountains. That's what, no, we had a couple that came to the river in, in West Palm Beach. They said, uh, the Lord's speaking to us that the last days are coming. And we found this one place in, up in the mountains of West Virginia. There is no 5G there. There's no 4G there. And we bought this land. And we're, 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 uh, we're buying this uh, a motor coach, like a caravan on wheel thing. And we're going to go live up there. And we're just going to isolate. And we're going to wait for Jesus to come. And, and the Lord gave us a word. I said, that ain't the Lord. They just looked at me like this. What do you mean that's not the Lord? That is not the Lord. That is not the Lord. Because Jesus said, go into all the world, yes. preach the gospel, yes. cast out devils, yes. lay hands on the yes. sick, speak with new tongues. Amen. How are you going to lay hands on anybody hiding up in the mountains? <laughs> no, people have lost their minds. They're hearing strange voices. They're getting strange words. It's not the word of the Lord. We're here to occupy till he comes. Amen. If you got five talents, double it. If you got two, double it. Amen. If you got one, you better don't bury it. Amen. But do whatever your hand finds to do and be faithful in whatever God's placed in your hand. Be a faithful steward of the resources and the anointing and the, and the, the resource, I mean, and the relationships and the things that God has placed in your hands and then, and then occupy till he comes. Be about the father's business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just keep doing what you know what you're doing. Amen. Amen. Because what does the word say? When the master comes and he finds them doing, finds them doing, finds them working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, if God says, go plant a church in a new city, I'll go. Even if Jesus is coming back the next day, what do you do? You go plant the church. Amen. And then you, you are found doing what he told you to do. And then he says, 
well done, good and faithful servant. No need to plant that church anymore because I've come. I'm taking the church home. But hey, I found you doing what I've called you to do. You were obedient. You were faithful. That's it. Hallelujah. And all this nonsense we deal with. People are so, so ready to shut the church down. Let's go online. God's doing something new. No, he ain't. God's not, God's not into online church. God's, not, God's into in person, laying hands on, spitting in, on, and sticking fingers in your ear church, casting out devil's church. Hallelujah. Dancing on the Holy Ghost church. Give me a break. And all this, it's another part of the end time deception. Church has left the building. We are the church anyways. We don't need to go to church. Shut up. You lying devil. You don't know what you're talking about. Where'd you pull that out of? The book of imaginations. <laughs> Chapter 1, verse 5. Book of imaginations. I'm the church. I don't need to go to church. If you are the church, you're a member of the church. Bible says you're a part of the church. You might be the eye, you might be the ear, but you need the rest, the rest of the church. So you can't just sit at home and have church by yourself. I'll read my Bible and pray at home by myself. I'm the church. <laughs> Shut up. Come here. I'm cast, cast the devil out of you. I'm going to lay hands on you fast and furiously. Give you some fivefold ministry. But that's the way of the world. That's how it's going, especially in America. We deal with that kind of stuff all the time. Isn't that true, my brother? Yeah, people like that. It's, it's the selfishness. It's the flesh. It's the, it's the fear. It's the comfort. It's the convenience-seeking flesh. And I know these times are not easy on the flesh. Good. Uh, it's been hard on my flesh. Good. Has it been hard on anybody's flesh here? Good. Praise the Lord. It's, it's been hard on my flesh. Good. You still feeling your flesh? You mean you haven't crucified it yet? Crucify the flesh and it won't matter. If I kick a corpse, he doesn't bite. If I spit on a corpse, corpse, he doesn't respond. If I pinch a corpse, there's no response. So if you die, there's no response. Just die. So Jesus can live in you. The, mo the more you live, the less Jesus lives. You must decrease, he must increase. And so that's why it can't be about survival. Because survival is all the flesh. And that's exactly what's going to drive the end time masses of nations to take the mark of the beast. Survival. Let me just take that mark just so I can buy and sell and eat, have some, something to eat and just have a place to just live and I can just survive. I can just make it another day. And the Christians that are praying, oh Lord, give me grace to just make it another day. That's the flesh. Let me just identify that for you right now. That's the flesh. Flesh needs to die. Hallelujah. Because you're not here to just make it, a, make it another day. You're here to overcome. Amen. You're here to prosper. You're here to walk in, in power. You're here to, you're here to shake nations. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you're here to advance the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about Him. Amen. It's about His kingdom. Seeking first His kingdom, not your comfort. Amen. Come not your success, not your popularity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the problem with a lot of preachers. They don't want to ruffle any feathers. They said to me in West Palm Beach, oh, you come here to rock the boat. I said, no, I come here to sink the boat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that pastor, he's so controversial over there. What am I con so con Preaching the word is not controversial. That's the problem. Preaching the word of God is not controversial. Yeah, because of the, the philosophy of the world. But be not conformed to this world with its ideals and philosophy and way of being and thinking and doing. But be transformed. By be transformed from one state to another state. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
And I know it says changed, but it's really not changed. Because like, I can change my hair color. I can just go blonde tomorrow, but I'll still look like me. Okay? But if I become an African, a, 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 big, a, a, big, a big two meter tall black man, with big muscles that I've totally transformed. You will not even recognize me. That's what transformation is. It's like that worm turning into a butterfly. Metamorphosis. It's like completely different looking. You don't even recognize it. It's not, it's not even like, ah, it looks about, yeah, okay, you just dyed your hair. And um, maybe you got like Botox on your lips or something. <laughs> Everything's fake now, you know. So many, so many fake women on the internet. Stop trying to be like all those fake women. It's all photoshopped. Ladies, stop looking at them trying to be... And if you're a Christian woman, you have no business doing that. Why are you showing your backside and... What are, you, what are you trying to do? What, what, are you, what are you showing? And all these guys making gang signs. They don't even know what sign they're making. They're making gang signs. And, well, I'm so cool, bro. You're making gang signs. You don't even know what you're doing. They're just copying the world, trying to be cool. Jesus didn't say be cool. He said be hot. Be on fire. I just thought I'd throw that one out there for free. I'm glad I came today. Hallelujah. Stop copying the world. Stop trying to be like somebody else. You want to be anointed? You got to be you. God has a unique destiny for you. There's no one like you. You're the only one like you. And you've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. And God has a special, unique plan and purpose for your life. But it is going to fit into the grand scheme of everything. It's going to, in the manifold wisdom of God, it's going to fit into the big picture, into the big plan and purpose of God. But everyone doing their share, everyone bringing to the table what God has given to them. That's why it's so important for the church to become united and under the corporate anointing, corporate vision. You know, that's where true unity is. And there's another false unity movement. You know, we don't, we don't unify and compromise the word. I'm not going to compromise the anointing. I'm not going to compromise the gifts of the Spirit just so I can go unify with a bunch of religious people who don't believe in the, the move of the Holy Ghost. I love them as my brothers and sisters, but I can't do anything with them. I can't unify with them because for me to unify, because they're not going to come up to my level. They don't even, they, they, they deny the gifts of the Spirit. They mock us behind the scenes, Pentecostals. They mock the Pentecostals. Behind. They come and smile to my face, shake my hand in the meetings, but they mock me behind my back. So I know, well, they mock me op openly on Facebook and YouTube anyway. So I, I'm not even, I don't even care. I couldn't care less. I couldn't give a rip what they think or say about me. They've said it for years. Who cares? Who cares what people think about you? What you want is you want the approval of other anointed people that can hear God and see God. You do want their encouragement. You do want their, their affirmation. You do need their confirmation, but you need to follow the Holy Ghost. You need to follow the Word of God because we can't be with you 24-7. So we teach you to follow the Holy Ghost. Learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Carry the anointing for yourself and not rely on some... Man of God to carry the anointing for you. You don't have to call me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Ask me, uh, Pastor, should I buy a car tomorrow? Uh, go buy a car. Yeah. Buy a nice one. Hallelujah. All this stuff. People want to hold the anointing and use it to control people. Like, I have the anointing. Everybody needs me. Get out of here. 
Everybody here carries the anointing. We we want everyone here to carry the Holy Ghost anointing. We want everyone here to be powerful. We want everyone here to prosper. We want everyone here to walk in power. Come on, church. Come on, come on. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Thank God he came from America to, to, to shout me down, but you guys need to do a little better job. <laughs> Is this helping anybody here today? Yes. It's time for you to rise up. Just call, come on, go ahead and say me. me. That's right. Just say, I am God's man or woman of faith and power, whichever one you are. Don't claim both. famous singer in america said now you have to use me uh, the new pronouns call me they and them oh the, how many demons are in you i'm not he or she call me they or, or them i have two I, <laughs> there are only two genders god made them male and female and that settles it for me And then you have churches that affirm this stuff. You have churches now. Ask you, what pronouns would you like to be would you like to be called by? Are you a he or a she or a they or them or what are you? I know this is strange to you. I have to deal with this stuff in America. This is the insanity I have to deal with over there. <laughs> there was somebody that came in the altar call. I thought it was a woman first, and then he he was, you know. He, she, whatever was coming from back when he, she, whatever came. I said, Lady, come here. When she came up to the altar, God realized it was a man. <laughs> man wearing high heels and a dress, put on some makeup. But when, when she came close, I knew it wasn't a she, it was a he. And then answered the altar call, gave his life to the Lord. And we're praying and doing deliverance in the room and and then the person said I'm confused I don't know what I am I was molested as a young you know boy I'm confused that's usually what it is but you know what if there's any confusion who is the author of confusion the devil is the author of confusion any confusion comes from the devil that's why if you are confused in these days you're listening to the wrong voice when you're listening to the voice of the Lord you're gonna have clarity you're gonna have direction you're going to have a strategy. You're going to have a way out. God's going to give you the way. Amen. And God's going to show you what to do. He says, go over there, do this, do that. Put your hands to, on this, and then I'll, I'll bless it. And you'll see the hand of God move on your behalf, and you'll see the blessing of the Lord come upon you. you see, you'll see the blessing of the Lord make a way for you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.